Hello and welcome to <laughs> to Andre the Ferret running around in the bathroom knocking stuff over. So this is jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland um, and Andre the Ferret who's now climbed onto me. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. And <coughs> Andre, shush. It's not hypnosis, although I only listen or watch this, listen to this or watch it when you can safely close your eyes because the intention is for me to bore you completely by just talking about absolutely nothing of any interest. So as I said, it's not hypnosis, it's just me talking. Andre, what are you doing? I just took him out for a walk and now he's, he's had some food, he's had a little sleep, but he seems to be full of energy, full of beans, aren't you? Maybe I should have given you your din dins before going out. So you could have worked off some of that energy, maybe. Huh? Hey? I'm just holding him and he's just staring right at me. Oh, now he's wiggling and he's jumping off. So I don't know what he's up to. I don't know really know what his uh, intentions are at the moment. I'm guessing he's going to be spending some time with his girlfriend in a minute and you might hear it in the background because it's uh, definitely an unusual sound right, can you hear that in the background that's him with the carrier bags the carrier bags which can never ever be used by a human being again they are um, put it this way he's left his mark on them it, he's you know he's definitely left uh, an impression <laughs> on those carrier bags they're a, a much different colour than what they were originally. So, the whole point of this recording is that there is no point, in a sense, other than just me talking. And as you do listen, it's, it's just standard stuff really to become a bit more focused on my voice as opposed to other surrounding sounds and that's just a natural thing that just happens and in the same way I become more focused uh, on my voice and Although sometimes, I think last night or the night before, I don't know, it was one of those that I did a session. I think it might have been last night. And I really felt, well, my voice went all weird then. I really, I really felt, I really felt like I was drifting off to sleep. So it was a, str it was a struggle to stay awake. It really was. But uh, I have actually done recordings where I fell, I've fallen asleep. Quite a few over the years, and it's it's difficult. It's you know because it's boring and it's even if it's a hypnosis session, essentially. Hypnosis can be used to help someone to have a better night's sleep in the future 
you know, tomorrow, tonight, if you, you know, to, for you to progressively um, feel more able to relax completely the second your head touches the pillow all the thoughts just disappear from your mind and you feel comfortable inside and you know just drift off to sleep naturally so offering those kind of suggestions now you know in a hypnosis session would be hypnosis but then if you're doing a session where you're actually falling asleep now then people will argue that actually you know because hypnosis is focus focusing and if you're drifting off to sleep then that focus is gone and it's not really any longer hypnosis it's just sleep and hypnosis is not sleep sleep is sleep just like um, socks are not donuts they're different things donuts are lovely but I wouldn't want to wear them <laughs> why I'm talking about do donuts but you know they're different things hypnosis can help you to feel as I said more relaxed and you know also with what I do there's always like a a continuous flow of energy that spreads throughout all of my work that I do all of the sessions and I call this work not because it's difficult not because it's challenging although it can be challenging and hard work sometimes but not because of any of that I don't get paid for it but it's my life's work it's what I do to give and you know what this is what I want to talk about although this this would be more of a um, hypnotic buffet topic really but it's okay I'll come back to that in a minute but yeah the I want to talk about it now why not I watched a program on television about it was about 8.30 it was on BBC One or was it 7.30 it might have been 7.30 on BBC One so I, I was just um, at my desk on my laptop I wasn't on my laptop, I was sitting on a chair because it's quite hard to use a laptop when I'm sitting on it but I was using the laptop and updating the website and just continuing to just move forward with that stuff and it's, it's never ending really and this program came on and it was, I think it was called something like um, I don't know what it was called it was something uh, but it was street uh, street feeders or uh, something like that so basically it was it was concentrating on a charity a Sikh charity where they called SWAT S-W-A-T and they feed the homeless people. They, not just in London, but they've spread out to other parts as well. And they, they feed, you know, it's not just sandwiches that maybe you'd get in a soup kitchen. It's actually hot cooked food, which is something that I guess uh, more than ever people need if, if they're outside to keep warm because I imagine if you're outside you'd be using up a lot more energy and a lot more vitamins and stuff like that but, you know to keep warm your body would be using a lot of energy for that stuff I'm making it up I don't know if it's true I just assume it is I'm not a doctor 
uh, or a nutritionist but I'm just guessing that just for the stress levels of someone uh, that doesn't have a home and hasn't you know has to find somewhere to sleep and is cold and doesn't know when the next meal is coming from would that would use a, a lot of um, a lot of energy I'm trying to I'm trying to be serious and focus on this I can hear Andre in the background um, uh, don't know what the right word would be but he's pleasuring my slipper I don't know there's, there's lots of different ways of expressing it but he's enjoying himself and uh, in this documentary it was it's just fascinating the thing that fascinated me most not fascinated me but um, caught my attention the most was that the person that was leading it how he said that what he was doing and what the whole uh, purpose of why they were operating this free charity you know to, to feed people was to help people just to help people not not for any other reason not to try and um, convert people into their religion and not, not trying to put any kind of um, not to recruit people to do anything not, not for any other purpose other than to help humanity and I can resonate with that this, that's why I do what I do and I know that this isn't the same as feeding someone that's hungry on the streets yeah it's a completely different thing it's a completely different way of helping people but I've known a lot of people that have struggled with sleeping in the past and to off you know and I don't just deal with sleeping and I do other things as well but it's nice to know that at any one time there's probably someone listening to me somewhere in the world and hopefully benefiting from my boring voice and that's why I do what I do is and it's quite nice to just hear somebody else with the same attitude as that I've got is that he's not doing it for anything he's not doing it for financial gain he's not doing it for any kind of reward he's not doing it um, other than because he's supposed to do it this is why I do what I do because I'm supposed to I think helping humanity helping people is what we're all supposed to do but I've got no control over what anyone else does all I can do is yeah, do my bit and this is what I do and it's about finding I think it's kind of it's definitely is turning into a hypnotic buffet isn't it but anyway it's still boring it's boring enough for you to go to sleep you can just drift off it's fine um, if there's anything interesting you can always listen back to it tomorrow uh, but there's something about doing something for others without wanting anything back in return without that motivation without any hidden agenda or any intentions no intentions really other than just to to hope that I'm helping others because I don't know you know I get a little bit of feedback 
a very, very small amount. And oh, that's my squeaky chair. I've got a big black squeaky chair that I sit in. I think I need to get another chair. I'm thinking about maybe getting a chair for visitors. So I used to have a settee, a little settee, and I got rid of it because Andre just kept. Andre just kept, basically destroyed it really. But I'd, I like space. See the rooms in my home. I've got a flat and it's a one bedroom flat. I've got a living room, bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, hallway, and a storage room. And it's, all the rooms are a nice size. But I don't want clutter. I don't want to be. The only things that I trip over would be Andre's toys and stuff like that. And I let him have the run of the place and he's, he can have his toys wherever he wants. But I don't trip over any of my own stuff, which I like. I don't want to do that. I don't just. So I like to have as little amount of things in my home as possible. I don't need much. I've got a television. As long as I've got the laptop, a television, and the ability to do what I need to do, make videos or audios. That's all I need, really. I've got internet connection. I've got a, a little video li um, a book library, hypnosis books and some other stuff. It's a lot smaller than it used to be. It's, you know, I quite like yeah, just basic, basic stuff. A, you know, a table, a chair, lights. You know, just general stuff. I don't, I don't have to feel the need to have lots and lots of um, big things. You know, if I put a a table and chair for like four people in here, it take up half the room. Well, maybe a quarter of the room, it'd just take up a big chunk of the room and it wouldn't really feel like a... It just, just wouldn't feel right to me, especially as I'm just one person. I don't really eat with anyone else, I eat on my own. I, you know, I live on my own, I don't, I, apart from with Andre, of course. So, you know, and I do have how many chairs do I have? Yeah, I'm not sure. But I've got, I've got a table which can fit four people. That's what I use. But I, I'm thinking of those, you know, like the long tables. See, so my table's big enough to fit four people to eat. But you it's not really big enough to wouldn't be big enough to have Christmas at or Diwali or Thanksgiving or whatever sort of religious celebration you're having you know it, it's, not, it's not really built for lots of food it's big enough for like one plate for each person and maybe just enough room for a drink and that's it, you know, so, which is fine, because I don't have anyone else. Uh, don't, I don't need any more room. But that might change one day. You know, I might meet someone. I realise I need to actually leave my home in order to, to meet people, but, so, you know, that's, that's a, definitely a, something that I might need to address at some point. But who knows, there might be someone listening to this that likes me. Someone that watches my videos or listens to my audios that thinks that I am... Well, who knows, who knows what, who knows what people are thinking? I have no idea. 
I suppose a good thing is you know you can go onto websites, uh, dating sites like Plenty of Fish or Match.com or you know there's lots of different ones um, around the world I guess. But you're never going to get to know someone online. Not really going to get to know about them until you meet them. Unless, of course, you you speak on the phone for ages, and you know it's, you have a big long correspondence. So I suppose you know people could get to have a sense of who I am as a person, because especially with these boring, you know, let me bore you to sleep sessions, I do talk about my life. And I also make stuff up as well, so it's I don't make stuff up when it comes to who I am as a person and but I and so I sometimes expand, you know, on a conversation that may not have ever even happened. But that's just part of it. Part of the the boredom process of you know, someone. You know, when you're trying to follow what someone's saying, but they keep going off in different directions, and you end up hearing a, about somebody's friend who's related to somebody else that once had a donkey, and like try and keep track of the stream of conversation and sometimes I just find it difficult to do that especially when I wasn't interested in the original conversation to start with and then to the kind of follow it all the way down to somebody that lives maybe in a different country who has some really faint connection with somebody that my friend may have known 30 years ago when he was a, a nurse in London on a rainy day you know, it's, it's, you know, I can't always keep track of that flow of conversation that goes on and I, I do find myself sort of switching off I mean I can listen I do have the ability to listen I've got I think I've got quite a good ability to listen when needed but <laughs> not always when it's not needed It's like the idea of doing something just because it's the right thing to do, to help others, to devote your time, your life to helping others. And in some ways, I suppose there's a, there's a positive and maybe a negative to what I do in a sense of maybe the, the negative would be that I don't get to help people face to face so I don't get to see the maybe some of the effects some of the uh, positive effects that I may have contributed towards that person's life because they may be in other countries and it's what I do is online and I don't you know I don't do anything face to face but the flip side of that is the positive which is I get to reach people all over the world Brazil Argentina in Argentina, Argentina, Bulgaria, China, America, 
in the United States is the biggest audience that I have. But the audience, the wide, the wideness of the audience is constantly surprises me. Portugal is another country, India, um, Romania, France, Belgium, Germany. One of those about to climb on me again, I think. He heard his name, he just looked over at me. And what's that country where they've got really it's like the richest country in the world, you know, as far as they've got the most richest hotels and the biggest restaurants and everything, they're just really everything's high tech. It's in the Middle East, I think forget what it's called. But it's, I get I even get people listening to me from there. So I just think it's really cool. I, I like it. So thank you for anyone that's listening to me or watching a video, although I'm not physically on the video, but I do upload the audio as a video. So I do that every every time. It's just uh, I think it's just all about reaching a an audience but also giving you an opportunity to watch or stream or download in whatever format you want. So if you want to stream it on iTunes or SoundCloud, you can. If you want to download it, you can. You can if you want to watch it on YouTube you can. So whatever really suits you is what I'm trying to aim at. Actually today, my iTunes podcast, because I've got quite a few, about 35 podcasts, and they're all updated now, so they're all on there, so I'm going to be making a few more soon, because I've tried to, tried to organise the self-help slash self-development sessions into categories. You know, like generosity, um, self acceptance, you know, things like that, self belief. I just think that it makes everything a little bit easier. You know, easier to find, easier to just listen to what it is you want to listen to for whatever specific reason you may be searching for audios, podcasts, videos, whatever it is you're searching for. You might as well have what you're looking for, you might as well be able to find it quickly. Which is why I've done that, why all my SoundCloud sessions are divided into playlists and so are my videos on YouTube they've all got playlists so this makes it a bit easier it makes it easier for me and it's it motivates me a little bit as well because I can actually see the stats and which ones are getting the most views or listens I get more of a, an idea of what's what I should do more of maybe and these let me bore you to sleep sessions seem to be relatively quite popular and I don't I don't get thousands and thousands of downloads of these sessions but they're they're doing all right. I've had, yeah. I was just checking the stats. 
on one of my podcasts, which was the Let Me Boy You To Sleep, because I've got two on Spreaker. One is because I have got it on my uh, iTunes, but I've got another one because that's on iHeartRadio and Spotify. So I kind of had to do two different podcasts. But one of them I was just checking, and it was about 900 downloads on one, and I didn't check the other. So I'm fairly pleased. That's just on the uh, Let Me Boil You To Sleep. And SoundCloud, it's a lot more than that. So yes. I do wonder why people listen, though. I don't know if there's any I suppose uh, it'd be nice to get a little bit of feedback just to say, you know, just to hear some nice words. I don't remember the last time that anybody left a comment on my SoundCloud channel, my SoundCloud uh, page. And it's SoundCloud forward slash Jason Newland. Soundcloud.com forward slash Jason Newland. Wouldn't it be just nice to have a comment? It just it seems a bit strange. I get like two to three thousand plays a week on SoundCloud, and yeah, I don't. No one leaves a comment. Someone's got to like what I do, please. Somebody out there, and I just know that. I only get the stats from people that have um, logged in. That are, <coughs> excuse me, they're actually you know a member of SoundCloud. Andre's climbed on me again. Andre, I can't breastfeed you. Stop it. And he's just dribbled all over me. That wasn't dribble, was it? Why do you keep doing that, Andre? Don't you use the paper on the carpet? Why you can't use my t-shirt? Andre, come on, give me cuddles. I think he's a little bit hot. You want to say hello to the people on the podcast? Say, can you hear him panting? Go and pant for everyone. <laughs> come on, pant for everyone. You got your little tongue sticking out. Have you? You're gonna make a noise. If I hold you, will you make a noise? <laughs> yeah, you did. Can I can have a noise? in a hurry he wanted he still stopped and had a little sniff of my socks before he got off he's gone to lay down hmm. I was saying something before he climbed on me but I've had no idea what it was something amazing of course Oh yeah, the stats on SoundCloud. The um, only the people that log in, I only get their stats. As far as who they are, you know, it's a, a, where they're from or what country and stuff like that. And continuously, I get the same people coming back day in, day out, week in, week out, but it's, uh, it's nice, if anyone, oh, I'm getting tired, if there is anyone that's listening to this, and 
you like what I do or even if you just want to say hello then please do or if you're listening on YouTube I know I've got a, a few people that do leave comments so you know I'm always happy for you to say hello and if you're listening on, on iTunes maybe leave a comment leave a message say something nice I only want nice things. I know it's, it might sound a bit, you know, one-sided, and you know why I should be open to everything. But I just, you know, I don't see the point in horrible messages and stuff like that. I don't do it to other people. I don't see why. I don't know why people do that, really. If there is anyone out there, if there, is there anybody out there, if there is anyone listening, because I like to think that the stats are real, and I'm, if SoundCloud isn't just making it up, and Spreaker are not just making up the, you know, so I'm, I really am getting 10,000 or five, 6,000 a week downloads and plays instead of maybe three imagine if I was only getting three downloads a week or three plays so someone somewhere is downloading I just sometimes I suppose it's because talking into a talking to a machine that's recording me it misses out the human element I know that although I know there is a human element, I, I suppose I am the human element, but so are you because you're listening, you're participating by downloading this uh, or by playing it, streaming it, or watching it on YouTube or on my, on my website, of course. So you are participating, you're because without you, there'd be no point in me doing this. If no one listened, I wouldn't. I have no reason to make recordings. And although these recordings, the let me bore you to sleep, you know, it's not therapy or anything like that. And it is just me being boring and talking for probably way too long sometimes it's okay it's uh, <laughs> it's okay for me I don't mind doing this but I like to do other things as well I do like to do the hypnotic buffets on Mondays um, I started doing the deep deep sleep whisper hypnosis sessions so I've made a couple of those over the last couple of weeks. I'm going to be doing more of those. I'd like to do one every day in the morning when I wake up. Because I just like to do it every day, but I just, I'll be honest, I can't, I'm not always motivated to do anything. So I kind of, I don't want to force myself to make a recording when I'm not in the mood because then well yeah, I might not enjoy it I might not enjoy doing it and if that happened then I wouldn't want to do it would I and I don't want to get into that position there are times I go through periods when I don't want to do anything or I don't want to make recordings and I don't. But the good thing is even if I don't want to make recordings and perhaps I want to, I might still have energy or motivation to do other things so I can work on the website, promote the service, spread the word as it were, or maybe I'll just go back to bed. 
what I have been thinking about is finding a way to get this chair to be less creaky. What I have you thinking about is it's a master's degree in hypnosis and it's at Bournemouth University in England and I'd love to do it I'd love to because I've got a, an undergraduate degree a bachelor's bachelor of arts BA BA with honours yeah and love you know the idea of getting a master's up here does appeal to me because I still have these still have these doubts about my ability um, intellectually or, or academically and getting a master's degree would go quite a long way to giving me that confidence in myself uh, academically um, you know but as, as well as from a hypnosis perspective to get a degree a master's degree in hypnosis would be phenomenal you know, for me personally it would be a dream, complete dream come true. And it would open up my options work-wise and give me a little bit more credibility, I guess, as a hypnotist to be, not that I want to be taken seriously, but to maybe do a little bit more, uh, maybe face-to-face -face with people in a, a professional environment possibly more I'm thinking more like NHS hospice or something like that but to go in and not have to jump through hoops or to prove myself but just to go in there and do my thing which I could do anyway but I just don't I don't know, I just, I think to have a master's degree would be amazing, you know, in hypnosis. And then maybe if it all goes well and I'm happy and I enjoy it, perhaps go on to do a doctorate, become a doctor, PhD in hypnosis. I mean, in a way, why not? I've already devoted the last 20 years to it. I'm obviously going to devote the rest of my life to this. And I want to do this. I want to do the online stuff. I'd like to progress it, though. And I'd like to maybe... Um, perhaps with a, you know, quite a high-level qualification... I may get a larger audience. They may start to see me as somebody with knowledge, somebody worth listening to, perhaps. It's possible. But at the same time, I still, I still want to just kind of be me as well. I don't want to be all serious and stuffy because that's not really the kind of person I am. Um, and it's, I've got no problems with people being serious when it comes to serious things so I'll, you know, I can still be serious about what I'm doing as far as getting the results and I still like to but I don't really want to take myself seriously yeah, I still I want to have fun if I'm going to be maybe going out there and meeting people, I'd like to have fun with it in the same way that I try and 
have a bit of fun with the online stuff that I do. Look, I just imagine doing a masters in hypnosis. And the good thing about it is I could even get help from you with the dissertation. I could do a study and I could make some recordings and I could get feedback and I could do a whole project online with people from all over the world because I've got that access, I've got that I've got the audience already. Um, it just be a case of contacting people and asking for people's little bit of interaction, I suppose, bit of time. So some of the, I guess, some of the issues with doing it is firstly applying. I kind mean, of semi-applied two weeks ago. But I'm still, just still not I'm not sure enough of myself whether I, whether I'm even capable of doing it. Then there's the financial aspect. I think uh, for the year, if I do, if I do the the uh, masters in a year, I'll probably try to go for the two years. I, don't, I think a year is a bit too much, but it's um, six thousand pound for the year. I don't even have sixty pound spare. You know, I don't. I don't have sixty. You know, I couldn't even afford to pay sixty pound. So six thousand pound is is out of my completely out of possibility so I don't know I might be able to get some kind of student loan from them to do it from the student loan company but then I'd need more than £6,000 because I'd need to travel to Bournemouth because I don't, I don't live anywhere near there I'd need to go there for You know, maybe a two days a week, or depending on how it works out. So it cost me, I think, it's seventy pound return each journey from here, and then I'd need to stay in a hotel or a bed and breakfast overnight, food and stuff like that. So it's, I'd need. You know, quite a few more thousand pounds to cover the cost of that for the year or over the two years. So it's a, it's an interesting possibility. I just uh, it's the idea of getting into debt doesn't really appeal to me because. I don't know how I'd pay it off. I imagine, you know, if I get a job, uh, a fairly well paid job afterwards, then they'd start taking a percentage of my earnings. But there's no guarantee that I'll get a job afterwards. You know, it's, it's all a case of. I'd be doing the degree, the master's degree, for to get the the qualification and to get the the knowledge and the experience and all the other things that I kind of already mentioned. I suppose it's not so much about a career move because in a sense my career is this I know I don't get paid but it's still it's still what I do 
in the same way as the people I was talking about earlier, uh, feeding people, you know, giving people food that are living on the streets. I'm just doing a different thing for a different audience, I guess. Although it might not be a different audience, and being homeless doesn't necessarily mean sleeping on the streets. Being homeless can mean you're sleeping on somebody's sofa. Or you're sleeping in someone's sitting room, you know, in their lounge. And there's probably thousands, maybe millions of people around the world that are living like that. They haven't got their own space, they haven't got their own room, their own bedroom, their own bed. So maybe there are people out there listening to me on their phone or on, on a computer, or you could be listening to this on Spotify maybe, or on tuning, you can get tuning and on television, so you can you can get dongles, you know, which gives you television channels and apps and stuff like that. So maybe you're listening to me via your television, or maybe you're just listening via SoundCloud or iTunes. Or Spreaker or iHeartRadio could be any any so many different places to you could be listening to me from. And there's no way of me knowing what your situation is, and I may never do, I guess. And it's none of my business anyway. That's personal, private your private life. I just hope that what I do is useful. That's all that's all I that's all I really hope for. It's not all I hope for, I mean I, I mean connected to this. There are a few other little things I'd quite like in my life that don't involve the internet or recording or hypnosis or boring, me being boring. But I guess that's a separate thing. Something that I can I hope for the future that changes will occur, you know, things do change constantly and Who knows, this time next year I might I might be living with someone, I, might, I could even be married. Who's, who's, who's to say? It's, uh, it's, we don't know, do we, what's, what's around the corner? Unless, of course, you can see around the corner and you do know what's there. Then you do know what's around the corner, but you know, I'm talking not physically or literally. But life's always changing. It's kind of part of the excitement. Kind of the is that the fact that life changes is I think it's a real boost for people who are struggling for whatever reason. Emotionally, physically, job wise, relationship wise whatever issues going on is those things will change maybe not fast enough you know but they will still change and I think that's quite a, a useful thing to remember if you can remember everything keeps changing so 
it's kind of uh, it can be frustrating and it can be wonderful I guess it's all depending on what it is that's changing I've noticed as I've got older you know I'm 40 I'll be 48 next month it's really weird when I say 48 I don't think of 50 but I'll be nearly 50 years old 50 five zero how on earth did that happen where have I been all this time how did how did I get here but here I am there you are whatever your age is whether you're 19 or 90 that's where you are now I do wonder what the time is now. <sighs> Such a squeaky chair. So I guess I'm going to bring this to an end because it's nearly kind of about an hour ish. These sessions I don't it's recording session. I don't know if I should call it a session or just a recording, this recording it doesn't have to last for an hour it doesn't have to last and sometimes I've done ones that last for an hour and a half I don't think it really matters too much I, I do get some people tell me that as soon as I start talking they just drift off asleep it's just, it's just that trigger you know, just Hearing my voice can be enough, providing it's safe for you to do so, you know, because that's the only time that anyone will ever fall asleep listening to me is when it's safe to do so. So, you know, if you're operating a crane, then, you know, don't, don't be listening to me when you're doing that. Wait till you get home. And you can close your eyes and relax and just let go and allow those feelings of comfort and just natural, just that natural feeling. Nothing forced, just absolutely pure natural. Just a, a curve in its own time, in its own way. I think that's quite nice to just not have to do anything. You know, kind of like going with the flow. suppose a bit like running water you know in a, in a lake or a river maybe a river more than a lake so a river just the water just flowing through but no effort doesn't need help just naturally does it it's the same way with the mind quite nice to just not have anything to cling on to not need anything to cling on to just relaxing allowing yourself to just let go completely it's such a nice feeling now I'm actually starting to drift off myself. <laughs> so I'm going to 
and say goodbye. Just remind you that my website is jasonnewland.com. Please visit. All my stuff's on there. All my old archives from 2006 up to the new stuff that I did the last few days. And I'm going to go speak to you next time. through his little plastic tube well it's a big plastic tube because it's not it's not tiny I don't know what he's about he's got quite a bit of energy tonight I think he likes to make noise when I'm making a recording I sometimes think he does it on purpose. Looks like he's about to climb up on me again. Yeah, here he comes. What are you doing, Andre? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you do, do? What are you do, do? He just wants cuddles. He doesn't want anything, he just wants a cuddle. I do tell him, I say, Andre, there's always a cuddle for me. I'm always available for a cuddle. Always. Always, always. I can never get enough cuddles from my little boy. He's, he's so cuddly sometimes. literally he's lying and he's upside down I'm just stroking him like near his tail and he's just he's got his his foot on my thumb and he seems real happy and just laying down not really making any any movement or anything. It's a very weird angle to be laying. Oh, now he's getting up again. Right, I'm gonna go. So, lots of love from me and from Andre. And I'll speak to you. time.